Caribbean island of St. Lucia was first inhabited by the Taino in 200 AD. The first Europeans arrived on the island in the year 1500, and it was eventually colonised by the French in 1660. Conflict rose as the French, English and Dutch all attempted to take the island as a colony. The initial colonial success of the French ended when they handed the island over to the British Empire in 1814. Prior to that, this island had changed hands 14 times in total. The British saw an opportunity for economic gain in the availability of farmland and slave labour, feeling their desire to occupy the village. However, the residents of this small village decided against the British rule and chose not to return to the farms. This revolution against the British led to a violent fire that destroyed the entire village, leaving only the now called Nativity of the Blessed Virgin Mary Catholic Church and a few other structures standing. Uh, Ancillary is, is, the, is the home for uh, St Lucia's history and heritage. Even ar around the church, there's a wall that was built uh, that's like 300 years old. The abolition of slavery helped in the rebuilding of the village, with the now free men turning to the vast seas of St Lucia for a new livelihood. By the mid 20th century, bananas and coconut copra oil were becoming increasingly important in the village as well as boat building. So you know things like banana plantations and cane and fishing, all these things was part of what raised our economy in the, in, 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 in the past. Villagers would go to the forest and build their own boats or canoes and drag in these rough hewn canoes to the beach was a big occasion accompanied by singing and merrymaking. Through all their struggles came freedom. On February 22nd, 1979, St. Lucia was granted independence from the British government. When that flag is going up, I thank God as with my whole family and we screamed and screamed and screamed because it's a moment we've been waiting for all our lives. St. Lucia implemented a parliamentary system and a constitution shortly after gaining their independence. The governance system of St. Lucia mirrored that of the United Kingdom with a Westminster-style parliamentary democracy and universal suffrage at 18. Unfortunately, a terrible hurricane struck Antillaray in the 1980s, costing the village its primary source of income, banana farming. An estimated 98% of banana trees were lost in this hurricane. Banana production fell by 36.2% and Azalare had to find a new source of income to survive. In the late 1990s, a new development called the Fish Fry, started by St. Lucia Heritage Tourism Programme, helped promote Azalare's fishing culture and encouraged people to visit the area. A lot of us in Azalare, we depend on fishing. Yeah. A lot of us go out fishing. The Fish Fry has become one of the most popular activities of its kind in St. Lucia drawing an estimated 1,000 people each Friday, returning the flesh to a once malnourished village. Ancillary, I think why it's so unique and special is because uh, it still retains a lot of the old Caribbean charm and it's, it really does something to my soul and, and that is the reason why I feel so attracted to Ancillary uh, because it's, it's just a special feeling while you're there. It, the community has soul and Ancillary really represents and has this true spirit of what St Lucia and St Lucia heritage is about. But the story doesn't end there. This town is yet to have their happily ever after. The next chapter in their life is yet to be told. Ancillary has a rich and interesting past, but the best part of their story lies within their future.